Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY and Alex on Tech video. I have with me today, Frederick Laluyo. He is the CEO and president of Era Technology. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So I thought we'd start at the beginning and just ask you to please give us the short version of what Era Technology is about and uh, you know the solutions it provides to the market and also a little bit of your impressive history in the world of tech. Okay, so I'll start with, uh, with what Era does, right? Mm -hmm. Era is a technology for the self-driving enterprise. And it really does a few things. It understands how your business works. It makes real-time recommendations. Mm -hmm. It uh, predicts business outcomes and it takes action autonomously. So think about it as a self-driving uh, cognitive operating system for the enterprise. And um, I'll ask you some questions about that in a second, but uh, tell us a little bit also about your history. You've founded some companies and worked with some pretty big ones. So yeah, short so I've got a short version uh, of, of 20 years of experience, but basically, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've spent the last 20 years in the world of enterprise software, mm -hmm. uh, trying to resolve the problems of planning, analytics, transaction systems, and the genesis of ERA fundamentally is around the fact that we believe that we're at the, now at the uh, a pivotal point where companies are moving from trans what we call transaction automation mm -hmm. to cognitive automation, meaning that we're now putting the emphasis on automating how decisions are being made mm -hmm. and executed. I know that's what ERA is all about. And look, I was at a Thales event in Paris about a month ago, and they were mm -hmm. talking about the concept of explainable AI, where the AI is not a black box, but has to actually be able to explain why it took those decisions. So I'm assuming your technology can do the same. Yeah. So. AI is a catch-all phrase, right? Mm -hmm. What we fundamentally do is we, we crawl all the data that sits into all the transactional systems and all the external systems that companies uh, need to or influence how companies uh, make decisions. And we capture all that data, we harmonize all that data. But then what we do is we understand how people make decisions, we replicate that in, in inside ERA, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna train the algorithms to based on how people actually think. Um, so just like a self-driving car, you first teach the car how to drive, but mm. then there is a learning process mm. by accumulating miles. Think Waymo now is 5 million miles driven on the roads. Mm. We do exactly the same thing. We, we teach the system how to optimize a decision, but then there is a learning process that's really driven by the human. So the humans drive how the AI actually works. And, and uh, which is an important thing, but I mean, if a human wanted to see a breakdown, uh, yeah. then ERA could give it, right, if you ask Yeah, the, the one thing about AI, and when you start delegating the decisions to a computer, is you need to have trust. Mm. And the trust comes with the ability to break down that decision into as granularly as, uh, as needed. Yeah. And that's fundamentally part of what ERA does, is, is providing that traceability into why do I make that recommendation at this point in time? What's the business value? Where it's coming from, from a data and a logic perspective? Now, I mean, a lot of this sounds like a sort of digital transformation on steroids. And, you know, I mean, we've had the concept of business intelligence for a long time, and everyone's talking about AI and machine learning and, you know, neuro, um, natural language processing. Yeah. So, I mean, what else can you, t I mean, I've, I've listened to what you've said, but what else can you tell us about what makes era fundamentally different from your competitors who presumably are trying to get to the same place that you are. Yeah, so you talked about my background, right? I worked for in the world of applications for a long time, business intelligence, transaction automation, and what You happened, probably dreamed about the technologies you've got today way back then. That's you know? the point I was gonna make, yeah. is literally the idea of era and cognitive automation goes back for me at 10 years ago. 10 mm. years ago I wrote about cognitive automation and the fact that the BI as we know it, which mm -hmm. consists of giving data to people mm. faster, better, and more tools is being, it's like you know, being a mouse in a, in a wheel here. We give people more data, more tools, but they have to make better decision faster. Mm. And it's get to a point where our brains are, are not wired for this. Mm. So we're Too much information, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's an information overload, good or bad, mm. I'm not even gonna go there. Mm. But the fundamental, what we're able to do today, think about what happened in the shop floor, in the man, manufacturing world, right? Humans were doing the work, then machines came, then humans started delegating the work to the machines. Mm. And if you look today, humans are still on the shop floor, but they're controlling what the machines are doing. Mm. The mm. machines are making the decisions on how to ship things and move things around where the same thing is happening now with the white collar world, where we gave humans a lot of tools to make faster decision. We're getting to the end of that point where now mm. the decisions are being made by the computers and the humans are controlling the decisions made by. We've seen that in several worlds in the financial sector. Now we're seeing that in, in the world of supply chain, manufacturing, 
uh, services. So that's the revolution that we're seeing. And what differentiates ERA from the rest of the pack is that we've built this system end to end from the data crawling all the way to the NLP, as you say, mm -hmm. end to end fully integrated as one solution to resolve that problem. Whereas the market comes with incremental improvements, mm -hmm. I'm replacing that tool by a better tool. ERA is a brand new category really around cognitive automation. Now, over the last, uh, I was reading through you know, the, the bio and you started in uh, June 2017. So mm -hmm. you're nearly a year old. What sort of advances and breakthroughs have you made just in the last year alone? So it's super interesting you mentioned that because actually the genesis of ERA starts way before June 2017. I'm sure, I'm sure. There is, <laughs> there is, there's been a ton of work done by the, 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 the CTO of ERA prior to ERA, um, like almost 10 years of work building all this content, all this incredible architecture that allows us to massage billions of records in real time. So mm -hmm. the, the ERA as a solution was ready to be launched in June 27, uh, 2017. Yeah. It was obviously so, the start of a new uh, era. It was, and that's why the name <laughs> is ERA, right? I guess because that's that, yeah. we really believe that we're now at the pivotal point at the start of a new era. Mm. And that new era, my nine-year-old son, I think is gonna look at my generation mm -hmm. the same way I look at my grandfather's generation. They mm. were using typewriters, we use laptops. I think those laptops will disappear and give way to uh, all sorts new of uh, new sorts of, of tools uh, that will make us look very old. I, I like to tell people that when you look at technology today, for all our advances, when you look when you compare it to what's been written in science fiction, we're still in the yeah. black and white era of technology. Completely. But it sounds like with cognitive intelligence, we're starting to see a few colors pop into the equation. So it's actually less complicated than we think. Mm. There has been no. If you think about a car, right? If you give me one minute in mm -hmm, terms of please. analogy. Yeah. If you think about the Ford Model T and yeah. you think about a car today, yeah. the one I drove from the airport this morning, mm -hmm. um, what's the common ground? It's the operating system of the car. Mm. What's common between those two is us. Yeah. We were 110 years ago the operating system of the car. We are still 110 years ago the operating system of the car. Today, That's yeah. changing mm. with self-driving technology. But for the first time, we're digitizing the human as a driver of a car. Hmm. If you think about the structure of companies, the way work was being done 110 years ago, and mm -hmm. the way the structure of companies are today, and the way work is being done, it's faster, but it's fundamentally hasn't really changed. Mm. And why humans make all the decisions the same way we're organizing big pyramids, and I think we're at that pivotal moment. And for that, you need to build memory. Mm. There's no intelligence without memory. Mm. And there is no memory inside big organization. We have processes to overcome the lack of memory. Mm. And what ERA does is it literally capturing how decisions are being made. And it's actually building a permanent memory for companies. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they always talk about the corporate memory being lost when somebody goes and people That's have exactly tried it. Wikipedia or sort of those sort of information systems. Yeah. But if you can digitize that even further, the way you're doing it, then it clearly will make a difference. But that's exactly it, right? So processes were there to overcome the lack of, of, of memory. You just said the right things. When someone leaves, the corporate memory goes away. Mm. We're recapturing that now over time. So when I come to you and I say, this is a recommendation I have for you, would you like to execute it? You'll say yes, you'll say no, you'll want more information. But ERA understands all the context of the decisions and over time can measure the impact of the decisions that you've made. It's very, very pragmatic, very real. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, you know, when you start capturing that over time, you'll make better decisions. And so who are some of the companies or at least industries that uh, are using your technologies now? And, yeah. and I guess what are some of the results they've been reporting? So we're going after essentially large complex organizations where, where the need for that corporate memory is very big. Mm -hmm. We've started in the world of supply chain, going after you know, uh, large complex supply chains in the world of pharma, biopharma. Uh, uh, manufacturing, CPG, mm -hmm. um, and you know the combination of, you know, we resolve all problems. So mm -hmm. the first thing is this is not sci-fi. We'll go and we apply, you know, this AI and this this analytics approach and building this permanent memory to all problems that never been fundamentally resolved uh, around planning, around optimization of supply chain. So we do that a lot. And then there is really more advanced use cases mm -hmm. that we can start tackling that were impossible before around some more predictive, uh, uh, you know, uh, leveraging predictive capabilities. Mm -hmm. And that's also super interesting. Uh, is Are you uh, selling your software inside of hardware? Is it a cloud service? How do the people connect? It's a connect? cloud solution. Yeah. yeah, it's a cloud service. We're leveraging 
internet scale technology, not just the cloud, but also the software that were built by the Yahoo's, the LinkedIn, the uh, Facebooks of the world, that high scale technology that allows us to manage, massage you know, billions of, of records in, in, in real time. And how long does it take for a company to install your cloud service on there, you know, or, or basically ingest all their information? I mean, obviously after yeah. that, it must be a continuous process of ingestion, but how, what's so the, the set of the, the, setup the first time? The first process, right, it depends on the, the source system of the company, but if you're using the traditional source system that you find in those large enterprises, mm -hmm. Uh, from the traditional software manufacturers. Yeah. We have pre-mapped all these uh, tools. So the, um, the crawling process is, is remarkably quick. Mm. Once we've crawled the data, we harmonize it and we make it searchable. It's a bit like Google, mm. where you can search on a customer or a product and it comes to life. So once you build that cognitive data layer, as we call it, mm -hmm. that might be a question of days to weeks. Mm. And we, we really can actually, the pro process itself can be just hours long. Mm. What takes time after that for the clients is to validate what they see sometimes for the first time. Mm. We are augmenting the data with our algorithms, so we're showing things like daily material movements to a company that has never seen that before. Mm. And now they go, okay, let, let us digest that. What does it actually mean? So that's the step one. It's crawling and harmonizing the data. The second step is building that intelligence, those bots, those, those what we call them skills, mm -hmm. that will automate a process that's usually run by humans. We have some that are already prepared, so we can deploy them very quickly. Mm -hmm. But usually our clients will say, okay, I want to customize this, or this is the problem I'm trying to fix. And for that, it's a matter of you know a couple of weeks to a couple of months to actually build the skills. Sure. So it's remarkably fast. But just like you know, going back to the self anal the analogy to the self-driving cars, mm. you think that it's easy to deploy that. Well, it's easy to deploy a self-driving technology today because we have satellites in the sky, mm. we have GPS systems, we have we have an incredible infrastructure that we don't talk about that allows a self-driving car now to to, to perform. Uh, the same thing for us, right? The, the end result, the tip of the iceberg, is very quick, but just because a lot of the underlying work has been built uh, uh, before. And so what is the interface that the humans use? I mean, does it plug into the existing uh, software they're using and, and then just makes decisions without you noticing? Is there a pane of glass? What, what, what's the interface? So today, humans still control the recommendations that are built by ERA. So mm -hmm. the interface will look like a Google screen where you have a search box, mm -hmm. you have an inbox with full of recommendations. You can click on those recommendations, say, execute or ask more questions. There are also mobile applications. We're using NLP mm -hmm. uh, to actually interact with the system. And the reason why we do that is not just because it's a nice, you know, fun tool, mm. but it's because if I come to you with a recommendation to do something for your business, it has to work in real time. Mm. The, the, the recommendation that ERA makes might be valid for, you know, 30 minutes or a day. Mm. And I want to be able to reach you as a user and capture your response wherever you are. So while we were talking, I maybe have been logged off, but we'll try. Era, what's my revenue this month? No, oh, just that's right. Revenue forecast is one point two five billion dollars against a one point two billion dollars target. Which regions are forecasting below plan? Please wait. Latin America revenue for November forecast is short by forty six million dollars. Service levels are expected to drop below 85% as a result. I'll ask one more question to sure. What's my backlog in Latin America? So it's going to take a second to think. Yeah, yeah. Can we ask about it? Backlog has risen by $39 million largely due to finished goods shortage of the logo product. I've found excess inventory for the logo product in Mexico. If the excess is shipped to Brazil, an estimated $32 million of the backlog can be converted to revenue. If you ask Eric about Life Universe and everything, they should say, look, don't bother me, just go and ask Siri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, clients have been asking us about those interfaces, yeah. and the dialogue could go, could go on. Yeah. What's super interesting here is that it's actually a dialogue. Mm. So it's not like I'm asking a question and get a simple answer. Era knows the context of my business, my position, the question that I'm asking, and I can go four or five level deep. Yeah, as, as, as you would expect, as it should be. The as case. it should be, because yeah. you're really replacing the dialogue that happens between two humans mm. or human with systems. Here, it's actually 
with Era. So the um, the last question that I would ask Era is, well, can you please take care of that? Mm. And Era would actually go and run the execution. So that's the connection between the brain and the nervous system of the mm. company. That's also part of what Era does, right? So suddenly this execution that could take hours and is error prone suddenly is run by, by the system. Just like your self-driving car can actually operating system can actually press the brakes or accelerate. Here we can actually take action back into the transactional system. You guys have turned the error message into a good thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you're here in Australia yeah. and obviously you want to expand in the Asia Pacific region. And Correct. So um, uh, that must be what you're here to do. Yeah, absolutely. We're here. We've just opened uh, ERA in Australia a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited. It's not the first time uh, Rajiv, Mitro and, and I are doing this together. Uh, we've done several companies uh, in the past and this is really the most exciting uh, opportunity that we have right now. Plus, you know, we have a big investor from Australia, so mm -hmm. it's good to uh, it's good to expand. Here. Absolutely. And so, do you already have customers here? We're starting right now. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if I have a look at my, uh, so tell me about some of the plans for the future. And I mean, one of my sort of follow up question then is, how do you see Era in a decade's time? Will Era be running itself? You know, you you won't need yeah, <laughs> humans so anymore. Era is really a, is a significant play. I mean, it's taking off very quickly right now, mm -hmm. and we're very excited. It's not an incremental improvement to another solution. Mm. It's, it's fundamentally new. There is nothing like it today. Mm. Uh, it took many years of R&D work to get to the point where now it's being rolled out in some of the largest companies in the world. What's fascinating for me is that we're engaging now with the, with the, 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 the highest levels into some of the largest companies in the world on that technology because we're resolving some problems that have not been resolved for a very long time. Mm. Um, so where are we going with this, right? Where we're staying focused on our, uh, uh, you know, the large enterprises that make stuff, that ship stuff, that transform stuff. There's a big market for mm. us out there. So we're scaling. We've got great investors, uh, a great team. You know, we're doubling our team this year. We'll double again next year. So it's all about scale right now. Yeah. I think that the product market fit, the vision market fit has been proven. Now it's about execution. Which clearly is what you're all about doing at the moment. Yeah, we're, we're all about execution now. Now, one of the questions I always like to ask is, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received to help you get where you are today? Oh, um, I don't know if I've received that piece of advice, but I guess I did like mm. 25 years ago, yeah, is go with your mentor. guts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't try to follow the flow. I mean, what we're doing with ERA is new. Mm. And uh, if you go with something new, you take risk. But if you think and you know, um, you know, that it's going to work, then go, go, all, be all in. And uh, I think going with the flow can be very dangerous mm. um, uh, for the kind of things that we're doing. So I would say, I would say two things. I would say, go with your guts, but mm -hmm. I also would say, write what you know, right? I didn't make that one up, but, but work on things that you understand if you're going to go with your guts. So combination of that can be can be pretty good so what's your final message for ITY viewers and readers but also for your current and future customers and partners um, talk to ERA <laughs> <laughs> ERA will, uh, will be uh, no I think uh, my, my message would be don't underestimate that revolution that's actually coming I know we are we're hearing at nauseam mm. about digital transformation and changing the world and I cringe when I hear that myself mm. But the reason why the team at ERA is doing what we're doing is that we know, back to your guts question, mm. but my guts answer, we know that this is happening. There is a moment in time where, where there, there is really a shift in, uh, in, in how we work, in how we do things, in how you know, the, the, the world works, and that moment is now. Mm. Now, it's very hard to see when it's happening to us right now, but mm. it is happening to us right now. For 10 years, I was going around saying, the world is going to change. And now I'm saying it's happening. Mm. So, so don't wait and think about the adoption of these types of technology as strategic. Um, you cannot afford to be late. You cannot afford to be number two. Mm. If your competitors are building that digital memory and you don't, um, they, they can will, really they, will, from you. they can literally take take over. So you know, Amazon demonstrated that. Uber to an extent has demonstrated that, and this can happen apply to to all industries, and it's happening now. So um, you know, don't wait and don't don't uh, underestimate the power of that tidal wave of change that's coming right now. Mm. Another example uh, of disruption at work. Yeah, exactly. Frederick, thank you very much for your time, and best of luck with the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.